What's up guys? So finally getting around to the clutch lever pull weight. Um, been wanting to do this for a couple weeks now. So I've got four popular levers here. <clears throat> um, basically, I'm going to do this in alphabetical order. I've got the ASV. This is the F4. It's the adjustable. We've got the Moose Racing Shorty. I think it's called their easy, easy pull, easy clutch pull, RTC, and a works connection. <clears throat> so in terms of quality, based on feel, the ASV feels nice and solid. Um, really no up and down movement, no play in the, in the lever. I think that's because they use a bearing in there. We've got the Moose Racing. This one does have play kind of both ways actually, side to side and forward, backward. And, you know, the casting on the moose, overall feel, the quality, not as, not as good as the others. Um, this one's got this weird pivot system in it, which I've noticed is really annoying when you try to adjust the cable because the cable slips out of the groove and then you gotta try to get it back in to adjust it. <coughs> so, not a super big fan of that. Um, and then with the RTC, Another nice piece, very little movement in there. Nice casting, feels solid. And then the works connection. I'd say the works connection feels both solid out of all of them. There's no, no play, great purge, nice adjustment system, click system, stays in there nice and tight. So the setup is, I've got, uh, you can see this tape I have on here. What I'm trying to do is be able to find a lever that I can use and to use two fingers to shift, ideally one, but on the 250R, the clutch is pretty pretty heavy. So I'm not sure I'll ever get to that point. On the 450, either, it's much lighter. I have a pro taper on the TRX 450 and I have a works connection on the hybrid. Both of them, the, the pro taper, which I probably should have taken off the throat in this test, but I didn't. That one I can easily do two fingers and uh, the works connection on the hybrid's a little stiffer, but not too bad. So I put this tape here because if we're looking at the two finger shifting, that's right in between the two fingers. So ideally, if I wanted to use, you have the most strength in your index finger, and then the second finger would be auxiliary. But I figure we'll put that hook for the, the scale right in between. And th this is also the hardest lever pull because you have the least amount of leverage. If you, if you, it's pretty easy to do a one finger shift on the outside on any of these, but if you move it to the inside, is extremely hard. So that's going to be the setup and I just have a fishing scale here, nothing fancy. Just put some black tape on it so I don't scratch the levers. And um, the clutch in the in the 250R is a full Henson with their HD springs. So if they had OEM springs it might be a little bit lighter so keep that in mind. Um, in, the, in the 450s because they're six springs I actually use a mix of springs. I have it's three hints in HD and three Tokyo mods high temp. So, you know, there that's a, that would be a separate test. It's not apples to apples. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do these in alphabetical order. I'm going to check the weights, write them down. The Moose and the RTC actually have multiple positions for the cable. The RTC has two and the Moose has three. So with any lever, the closer you are to the pivot point, the easier the pull is going to be. But there, there's a downside to that. The closer it is, as you're moving that lever, if you imagine the cables that way out here, you're spanning that whole gap. As you move it closer, you're actually getting less cable pull. So you'll get an easier clutch pull, but less cable movement. So in my situation where I, I need it, my other issue is, I needed to disengage before the lever hits my other two fingers. And that was the issue I was having before. On the TRX450, it does it great. I can I get full disengagement before that before the lever hits my other two fingers, so I can keep that on my bars at all the time at all times. And um, but with the 250R, I found that I had to use it wasn't disengaging enough, so I had to use my whole hand. So that I still need to work on. I did do a change, I swapped out the clutch arm. Uh, I got one from BDT. It's made a little bit longer, so you get more leverage on it. Um, so I'll do that 
I'll have to work that out next and see what works the best. But for right now, I just want to see, let's, let's see what, uh, what the pound of pull is on all these and go from there. All right, so I'm going to get these set up. Got the ASV lever installed here. I'm going to set all these up as I would normally. I'll have a little bit of play in each one to make sure that the clutch fully engages. You always want a little bit of play. And get our scale going here. We're zeroed. And with any clutch pull, it's not linear. If you were to look at it on a chart, it's not linear. It's going to be, it's going to be a, an arc, a curve. So you're going to have a peak. It's going to, it's going to go up quickly, peak out, and then it's going to taper off. So up, well, you can't see that. Up, and then it's going to taper down. So I don't, I'm not concerned with the clutch, pull, the clutch pull way back here. I want to know what that peak is right at that top of that, that arch. And so that's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go slow so that we can see that. All right. So right there, I'm at 20, peaked out at 20. All right, so it looks like 26 is going to be our 26. So 26 pounds <clears throat> at the peak for the ASV. And you can see what I mean with the one finger. You could you one finger it here on the end. But when you move it here, I can't even do it. Put two fingers on, I can do it. So those are the things that we're kind of looking out for in this test. Um, just want to see where all that stuff hits. So 26 for the ASV. Next, we're going to do the moose. All right, I got the moose installed. This one, let's see, zero. Zero that out. OK. So this one I didn't put the piece of tape on because it's such a small, it's going to be about the same anyway, since it's a shorty. So we're just going to go with it. Now, this is in the closest hole to the pivot point. I tried it when I first got this on the outer hole and forget it. Uh, if I had to guess, it'd probably be up in that 35 pound mark, mark somewhere. It's just not even usable. So let's see where we're at with this. 17, 19, 20, 21. Saw it hit 24. But But I already passed that high point. Right about there should be the peak. 19, 20. Move it out to the end. Maybe 16. Put it right in the middle where my where it would go. I'm going to say 21. So 21 pounds for the moose on the closest hole to the pivot point. All right. We'll write that down. 21 for the moose. And next we'll do the RTC. RTC is mounted up. Our scale is zeroed. Let's see where we end up on this one. 19, 24, 
going to say 24. It was about like 24. <laughs> okay, so 24 for the RTC. Last one up is the works connection. Works connection lever is on. This one's the stiffest out of all of them, I'll tell you right now. So let's get our scale on. We're zeroed. Thirty-two, thirty-two, thirty-three. I'm going to say thirty-two. Definitely stiffer than all the others. Well, that's a shame. It's such a nice setup. All right, so I'm going to put down thirty-two for the works connection. So that was an interesting test. Um, just to recap, well, actually, here, I reordered them in the weights. So we've got the moose here with 21 pounds. Then we've got the RTC with 24 pounds. We've got the ASV with 26 pounds and the works connection with 32 pounds. So, um, you know, we've got three Three that are fairly close, the works connection is way out. 21, 24, 26. Obviously five pounds, still pretty significant. Um, I think, you know, take all this with a grain of salt, it's, there's much more exact and precise ways of doing this test. But for me, for what I needed, and hopefully, you know, let you guys some, in on some information, this test was fine for me. Uh, manufacturers probably have their own numbers, and uh, that's fine, but, you know, it gives me an idea what, what I'm working with. I think, you know, obviously the moose, the moose is, is the lightest in that inner hole, and I think I'll have to try it. What I have to see is where that disengagement point is. If this will work in that hole... <clears throat> and disengage. Now this one is a little different because it is a shorty lever. So I really can get by with having that disengage a little bit later, especially if I trim down this end. I could just leave the leave the bump on the end, but basically cut, kind of cut this in half, round it off so that it fits in between my fingers a little bit better. And that could actually work out well. It's, uh, you know, it should get the job done. If it doesn't, then I'll try the RTC. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys love the RTC on the 250R. Brian Marion, the owner, creator, super nice guy. He also does the shrouds, all the shrouds I run and the louvers for the radiators. So it's got nice stuff. And uh, so I guess I'll try that, see where, where I net out in the motor with a disengagement, see how, you know, probably try try a race with the, with the moose or at least do some practice sessions and see how it works out. I am going to... Now that we got this, I want to put the moose on the TRX 450R and see how how it does on there because that's got a light pull already. I mean, that, this may make it super light. And then I also I am going to pull that pro taper off and try it, try this same test on the 250R just to see where that one comes out because it is it is light on there. I I can't imagine it's going to be much lighter than the moose, but I don't know. Maybe they have a special trick that they use. I don't. We'll see. So I, I can report back on that, but. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was, uh, it was insightful to me and um, kind of a cool test to do. So not sure what the next video will be, but come up with something. All right, guys, take it easy.